Namaste and welcome to Detours with me, Anuradha Goyal, where I talk to some very interesting personalities about journeys of all kinds. Namaste and welcome to Detours. Today we have with us a dear friend, uh, Arun Bharatwaj. He's a fellow blogger and a fellow temple explorer. Uh, it, by profession, he works for an energy company and he utilizes his weekends and public holidays beautifully by exploring a lot of Bangalore where he lives and uh, a lot of India. And uh, we've had a long, lot of discussions about temples and documenting temples. Arun, when he met me, he gave me a beautiful book on the temples of Bangalore, which has become my guide to go and explore uh, temples of Bangalore. And I'm yet to see most of them. So I requested Arun to come and speak about temples of Bangalore. So Arun, welcome to Detours. Thanks a lot uh, for the introduction and warm wishes to all our uh, viewers. So tell us, you know, most of us think that Bangalore is a young city. It was born 150, 200 years ago. It was a military uh, city, you know, cantonment, and then it became a city. And we have this strange story of the name of Bangalore. So tell us, is Bangalore really that young? <laughs> it's much better, actually. Some people think that Bangalore was founded by Narayan Murthy. So <laughs> your description is much better than that. Yeah. Okay. Actually, the history of Bangalore goes all, and all the way back to prehistoric times when uh, Stone Age and megalithic men used to come here. We had uh, Stone Age paintings also in a couple of areas in Bangalore. But unfortunately, due to urbanization, we have uh, lost all those. And then we have dynasties coming over and ruling from right from 8th century onwards. We have the documented history. So uh, the name Bengaluru itself uh, is there in one of the inscriptions uh, found uh, at a uh, temple in Begur that is near Silk Board, not very far from Silk Board Junction. So that means that uh, the name Bengaluru existed right from 8th century, but the exact location at that point of time is still unknown where exactly that village was. Mm -hmm. And Kempe Gowda uh, made use of that name. Probably he liked that name or uh, some theories say that uh, the village Bengaluru was his uh, you know, wife's native place. That's why he named his capital as Bengaluru. Mm -hmm. So the etymology goes all the way back to 8th century and then uh, it was ruled by uh, dynasties like Gangas, Cholas and then Hoysalas, Vijayanagaras and uh, Mysore Maharajas, Tipu Sultan and the British. Uh, they they started their own and uh, they built their own city in the cantonment area that, is, that was adjacent to the Pete area which Kempe Gowda built. So uh, that's a brief history of uh, Bengaluru before uh, we had urbanization and IT revolution, which came up in the late 70s and early 80s. Okay. So uh, you say the recorded history goes back to 8th century. You know, it may have been earlier, but the yes. recorded history goes back to. So take yes. us through the prehistoric remains in Bangalore. And if you want to share your PPT, you're welcome to. So I have divided uh, the temple history into four stages. That is prehistory, ancient, medieval and modern. So prehistory I have uh, placed, uh, which is more than 2000 years old, ancient will be 8th to 16th century. And then we have medieval with 16th to 20th century. And we have some modern temples as well, but I, I don't feel that vibes if I go to a modern temple, but still there are a few temples which are uh, quite popular and are frequently visited by uh, tourists and locals as well. So I'll take you through some of those modern temples as well. So let's right. start with uh, prehistoric uh, temples. Uh, it, yeah, Arun, uh, um, just remember that a lot of people listen to this in audio as well. So uh -huh. keep talking in descriptions. Ah, sure, sure, sure. All right. Okay. So let's start with uh, prehistoric times. Uh, uh, we have a, a structure which resembles Chakravyuha, Abhimanyu's Chakravyuha. So that's found near Banergata forest. So this is a strange formation and uh, people worship it. People go around the circle and have some wishes in their minds which gets fulfilled apparently. So this is a kind of temple which does not have any deity, but people have faith in this one. If they circle around this central uh, structure, 
their wishes get fulfilled is what uh, they believe and this kind of structure is found in a few more places across india this similar kind of structure and uh, it is believed to be more than 2000 years old and it's kind of a stone age uh, structure and uh, that's one of the oldest structures i've seen uh, all across bangalore so that's the oldest handmade structure so this is a structure which is found when you enter suvarnamukhi hills uh, after crossing banargatta range of forests and then you have uh, menhir also this is in anjanapura in south bangalore there is a naga temple so the naga temples itself are very old nagas are worshipped i mean they were worshipped all across india right from prehistoric times and we have a naga temple here and on the premises we have this menhir so menhir are also bronze age structures wherein uh, people used to uh, keep it uh, and uh, they used to uh, calculate time based on the shadow and uh, what time of the day it is slowly it became a tradition to worship it and they put all the vibhuti everything on top of that and they started worshiping it and it became a temple of its own so this kind of menhirs are also found in bangalore and one more disclaimer i want to put that is uh, I, whatever i'm covering is all under bbmp limits uh, and i'm not uh, covering any temples beyond the bangalore city limits so there are quite if i expand it there will be hundreds of more temples to cover so okay. i'll i'll keep it uh, within the bangalore city limits range and then we have bande mahakalama temple this structure the outer structure which you see is a modern structure but the the boulder or a stone hillock which you see inside is very ancient and uh, the practice of bali is still practiced here this is in chamrajpet in uh, just west of central bangalore and uh, this uh, temple is uh, frequented by most of the traditional uh, families in central bangalore then this is the elephant rock uh, temple which is just near the south end circle in jayanagar have a obelisk kind of structure if you remember asterix uh, comics yeah. so these are kind of uh, stone age structures which are uh, uh, which are seen in that particular area uh, exact history is not known but uh, people do circle around this and they uh, i mean their faith is that the wishes get fulfilled again and there is a temple which is dedicated to bhavani shankar just next which is a modern relatively modern structure and this is a cave temple in holi mau which is in south ba south bangalore uh, just close to banargatta road minakshi mall so this was a prehistoric structure where lot of stone age uh, weapons were also performed and after that uh, it's believed that lot of sadhus also meditated uh, within this uh, cave premises so making it one of the oldest uh, temples uh, but now it's been completely renovated it's been tiled and there are some shivlingas which are placed inside uh, the cave but it, it's it's a prehistoric structure as documented in some of the official records so this is a petroglyph so petroglyph is something which is a, a carving on uh, on a solid rock this is called a sati stone and this kind of structures are found mostly in uh, open hillocks and boulders uh, across india but in this particular image you are seeing a structure which is carved in bande matha near kengeri in uh, west bangalore so these are kind of uh, some kind of strange st structures which are uh, in that particular temple premises uh, and, but nobody worships these structures anymore because there is a, a new shiva temple and a math which uh, uh, is existing there so people go and visit that uh, particular place rather than coming here and offering their prayers and uh, we have one uh, interesting temple in padaranpura uh, of uh, mysore road there are uh, some rock form which are in the shape of a serpent a snake so uh, during uh, uh, after independence uh, there was this plan of expanding the city cutting down of trees and all to expand the city and they tried a lot to cut this boulder but they could not i mean break this stone and remove this from the uh, from its original place so that's kind of a magical thing which happened here and they built a temple around it and they named it swayambhu nagaraja temple so that kind of a uh, uh, structure is this and uh, it's believed that people uh, who do seva here after having bath their wishes gets fulfilled here 
So this is one uh, uh, I placed it in prehistoric structure because uh, it's it's kind of a rock formation which is uh, worshipped as a temple now. This is Katirama temple in Kormangla. So these kind of temples are found all across uh, Bangalore actually. So you can uh, as you can see the main deity is the tree. So people worship tree as a deity and it's been worshipped for over centuries. And this temple exists within a BDA park. So this kind of Katirama temples, Munishwara temples are found all across Bangalore in uh, whatever locality you reside in. If you go and uh, see the older areas, uh, you, can, you can find at least one Munishwara temple or temple or any other Amma temple there. And you can see Nimbu lemons uh, hanging around there and Trishul. We can uh, deduce that people were close to nature in prehistoric times and they worshipped uh, natural things like water or uh, trees, plants. So all those things were worshipped in those times. This is another Munishwara temple which is on Hosu Road, just opposite the Forum Mall near Christ College. This temple is uh, well visited and well known, especially from people who come from Tamil Nadu side. So just close to the bus stop. This is where uh, the locks are offered. Yes, this is where the locks are offered. Yeah, that's a good point. In, in several temples, uh, Munishwara temples and Amma temples, locks are offered, which is unique. Uh, and uh, I think the main reason behind is uh, uh, some some uh, spiritual connection because i saw one temple in kerala which was chained it's called a chain temple uh, that was chained because they did not want uh, evil spirits to get out of that area and, and evil spirits to get trapped within that and not escape uh, from there so probably it's uh, one of the reasons i'm not sure about the exact reason why locks are placed there i think they are wish uh, wishes that are yes. Put yes. there and when wishes are fulfilled people come and open the lock yes yes that's the common belief and yeah. it is pretty much a global practice we find right. it across cultures across the world absolutely true so this uh, tree temple in Rajarajeshwari Nagar it has a Shivalinga and a Nandi idol also and people worship the tree mainly and they have kept the Shivalinga and the Nandi just uh, so that it, it has a divine uh, feeling there and of course, uh, the Nandi looks quite old. It, it it looks at least 500 years old there. But people were tree primarily here. So these are the prehistoric uh, structures which to cover. Uh, I mentioned the areas and locality names also. It's it's all across Bangalore. So wherever so you are. It looks like, Arun, to me that, uh, you know, the South Bangalore is probably the oldest part of Bangalore. Uh, I mean, it, uh, central from, part is the from oldest the part evidence perspective. Yes, yeah, from the history point of view the oldest temple in bangalore is from south bangalore only right. but uh, yes there are quite of uh, quite a few old temples in north bangalore too north and east bangalore especially toward if you go to old trust road hoskote area and all you can find a lot of old temples there but okay. yes most of the prehistoric structures i found in south bangalore but if you go outside bangalore towards the airport outside the bbmp limits that is you can find a lot of uh, stone age dolmens and you can find a lot of uh, prehistoric menhirs and all those kind of structures you can find okay. in, in northern side of Bangalore okay. as well. So let's talk about the dynasties uh, which sure. uh, controlled or ruled over Bangalore and the imprints that they have left. Sure, sure. Yeah, let's talk about ancient uh, times, uh, right from 8th century to 12th century. We had uh, the Gangas, the Cholas, the Nolambas and Hoysalas who uh, ruled over this part of India. And uh, their capital was not very far from uh, Bangalore. So the Gangas had their capital earlier capital in a place called Manne, that's near Nelmangla. So they ruled from there. And uh, they built this Begu temple, the temple which you are seeing here on the screen. It's, it's an 8th eight, century temple and it's uh, the oldest temple in Bangalore. And fortunately, the old structure still remains. So if you want to see an old structure, oldest monument in Bangalore, you should come and see the uh, Panchalingeshwara temple in Begur. So earlier, uh, one linga was built, installed by the Gangas, and later on it was added on and expanded by Cholas as well. So and an interesting part here is that uh, there is uh, an inscription which mentions the word Bengaluru here, I, as I mentioned earlier. And also there was a huge hero stone which was found here, which mentioned about a war which happened between the Nolambas and uh, uh, the Cholas. Uh, you, you, can, you, you can see that uh, hero stone in uh, the Bangalore Museum uh, next to Vishweshwara Museum. So it's it's there and it mentioned most of the villages 
that's around Bangalore, which uh, are of part of are a part of Bangalore city now. So all the areas near electronic city like Huli Mangla or uh, Bedaspura, so all those names are mentioned in that uh, uh, hero stone. So that that's a very detailed stone. So if anyone wants to see that stone, you can visit uh, the Bangalore Museum. So in the same village, in the Begur village, we have uh, some old Jain vestiges also. That means that uh, this was an ancient Jain center as well. It had uh, old Jain vestiges, but uh, we don't see any Jain temples currently. Old structures which are preserved in the, uh, a house premises, in at the terrace of a house. So this shows that uh, there was a Jain presence in this area. And then we have this uh, temple in Madiwala. We are moving into Chola, so we are done with. So Chola dynasty starts here. So we, uh, as you can see, a lot of uh, Tamil inscriptions. So these Tamil inscriptions are from the Cholas. And uh, at the base of the temple, uh, at the base slab of the temple, you can uh, see the word Bengaluru mentioned. Oh, wow. Cholas used to call the name of the place uh, as Bengaluru, B V. So, uh, so another the second temple that mentions the word Bengaluru. Correct, correct. Yeah, the second and temple. This is twelfth century. This is around twelfth century. Yeah, that's okay. correct. So we have a record eighth century and then twelfth century of the word Bengaluru. Correct, correct. Yes, and this also mentions a village called as Vepur, which is a modern day Begur. So okay. it, it mentions uh, the two prominent localities uh, of Bangalore city. Right. So, uh, yeah, we uh, this is the perhaps the oldest temple built by the Cholas, and uh, it's it's close to the bustling uh, Silkport Junction. And then we have uh, a few giant shivalingas placed uh, at a village called Bili Shivale in the northern Bangalore. If you go towards Hennur and if you cross Hennur, uh, you will find this village called Bili Shivale. So, at a farm near Crematorium, you you find these. Uh, huge uh, shivalingas and this place was called shivalaya in those times in the times of cholas but unfortunately the shivalingas lie abandoned now in the middle of that field but yeah these are full of antiquity and then yes the only temple in bangalore city which has erotica is not very far from uh, billy shivali which we saw just now this is in a place called uh, dodgubi so uh, this place comes after hennur uh, cross uh, when you go towards uh, the national airport, the new road which has been laid for the village called uh, Dodgubi, in that temple, in that Shiva temple, on the outer wall you can see an erotica image as well. So this is one speciality. So this of the... should be about tenth century. Yes, this should 10th be tenth to twelfth century in between that. Because most erotica is found uh, in that era temple. Right, that's correct. Yeah, and this is the only erotica, if I remember, seeing in, in the city of Bangalore. And so, then this... so we've seen uh, the Gangas, we've seen Cholas. Cholas, you're seeing the Cholas now. Okay. The, the temples which you are seeing are all Chola temples. This is another ancient temple which has been almost 95% renovated now. You don't see much of historical structures there except the ones which I photographed here. So this is uh, Someshwara temple in Hulimau, which is again in uh, South uh, Bangalore. So the uh, left side you see Surya image. This mm -hmm. is from the Ganga times. But the temple was uh, built mostly during the Cholas. Another temple which is near uh, Kalasi Palyam. Uh, this is called Jalakanteshwara Temple. Initially, uh, the Shivlinga was installed by the Cholas. But later on, uh, Kempe Gowda came and uh, renovated it and expanded it. So these are the key Chola temples. I've, I've just uh, added a few more here, just for information. This is the so uh, Someshwara Temple, which is close to the IT hub, which is close to HSR layout for Mangala side. And it, it is believed that uh, when the Abhishekam is done on Shivalinga, uh, the ghee turns into butter, is, is what I've heard. I've not seen it through my eyes, but uh, I've, I've heard a lot of stories on that one. So this is... Uh, I should uh, go and explore. This is close to where I live. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's very close to Sajapur Road, HSR layout, Kaur Mangla side. So it's it's very close to that junction where you see the Jagannath Temple there. Right. Just opposite to that. Okay. So next one is uh, the Chokkanatha Swami Temple in Damlur. That's near the HAL airport, old airport. This is a Chola temple, and strangely, uh, ninety-five percent of Chola temples I've seen are Shiva temples. This is the only temple which is a Vishnu temple in uh, built during the Chola times. 
but yes it was again renovated during the vijayanagara times and uh, the the inscriptions which you see uh, from the vijayanagara era also just opposite to that is an anjanaya swami temple in damlur uh, it, it it's uh, built in such a way that the head of uh, hanuman is directly uh, in line with the feet of uh, vishnu here in this temple oh. uh, in the chokanatha swami temple so now it's very difficult to find out because uh, in between this temple and the anjanaya temple there are which has been built and it's uh, even difficult to take your own vehicle <laughs> area it's preferably uh, I mean, walking is much better in this area so uh, it, it's all uh, commercialized now this area is beyond recognition but this but, yeah, Anjaniya Swami temple true. is also old Anjaniya Swami temple is also old yes yes okay. but both are built during the uh, different eras okay so uh, this was built during the Cholas and probably Anjaniya Swami temple was built during the Hoysalas so they saw the uh, Shiva temple and uh, they saw the Vishnu temple and they thought that, uh, I mean, there was a elevation there and there was a, a slope which went downwards. So they decided to build a Hanuman temple, which uh, directly faced, I mean, in line with uh, Vishnu's feet. And then this is uh, probably the most famous temple in Bangalore. This is Someshwara temple in Alsur. So initially built by the Cholas, but later on Kempe Goda uh, built all those Gopurams and uh, the carvings, everything came up during the Kempe Goda's times. Uh, this is an ancient temple in Bilay Kali in uh, South Bangalore, Banagata Road. Does not have much of history and neither it has any carvings or any other details. Just for record's sake, I put it here. So there are a lot of Someshwara Swami temples across Bangalore. Yes, yes. Uh, most of them were built by Cholas. So, uh, Someshwara was their family deity, is what uh, one of the Chola kings which uh, ruled around this region. So, that's why most of the temples are Someshwara temples here. And uh, the similar nomenclature was followed by the next dynasties as well. Even Hoysala built some Someshwara temples during their times. So, the next one uh, you see is the Ananda Lingeshwara temple, it's in Hebbal. Uh, if, if you go into the by lanes of Hebbal uh, uh, just before the flyover, you have to climb a small hillock and you will see this boulder and uh, you, you find a Shiva temple there. It's called Ananda Lingeshwara temple. It's lost all its antiquity. It's completely renovated now. But yeah, it, this also dates back to the Cholas. Then we have uh, the Someshwara and Venkateshwara temple in Kengeri. So these would so, be what period? 12th century, 11th, 12th century. Yeah, Cholas are uh, up to 12th century. The, the ones we are covering is between uh, yeah, 10 to 12th century. Then uh, if you go to NAL, National Aerospace Laboratory, so you enter this paradise. It's it, it's a small oasis wherein you find a lot of trees and this old ancient temple in middle of nowhere, in middle of uh, a technology hub actually, a manufacturing hub. So you find this uh, uh, Malikarjuna Swami temple and Someshwara temple in this complex. This was also built during the Cholas and it has a few inscriptions as well mentioning about uh, its construction time. And it's open only on Mondays. So uh, they op uh, since it's a defense area, they don't allow people to visit it during normal weekdays, uh, other weekdays that is. Uh, they allow only on Mondays when they come here and do the Monday morning pujas. So this is uh, Kashi Vishwanatha temple in Kadugodi. It's near Whitefield. So uh, this has also been renovated completely. So this is a Saptamatrika figure there, which is an ancient uh, carving, uh, which has been placed outside the temple. So this is a Shiva temple again, built by the Cholas. This is another Kashi Vishwanatha temple in Kalkere, uh, near Hennur uh, main road. This is Mahalingeshwara temple in KR Puram. This has been completely painted, not renovated, but painted. So it has uh, five Shiva temples in this premises, uh, dating back to Cholas. So these all temples are from 10 to 12th centuries, as I mentioned. This is another interesting temple, Gavi Gangadhareshwara temple, which was built initially by the Cholas, but uh, it was later uh, popularized by Kempe Gauda. And it's uh, inside a cave. And uh, a unique feature is that in during Makar Sankranti, uh, in March, April time, uh, the sun rays directly fall on the Shivalinga. And a lot of people witness this uh, phenomenon. What are these discs in this temple? I'm not sure exactly what uh, this means. It, it it relates to something related to astrology is what uh, some books mention. 
but uh, exactly what yeah why it was built i, I don't have much of an idea okay. yeah yeah but this was this was built during the campegora's time i mean these uh, discs so campegora time is uh, actually medieval time right yes yeah that's it's correct 15th yeah. to 15 16th 15th century onwards yeah okay this one is vasantpura vasanta vallabhaya swami temple this is near uttarali uh, banshankri near close very close to banshankri bus stand so uh, this is also an ancient temple built uh, during uh, cholas and it's believed that uh, rishi mandavya and rishi gautama uh, did penance here and did lot of tapasya here just a few meters from this temple is a cave which is called uh, mandavya rishi cave uh, we can still see that cave now but uh, the approach uh, road is not there and we have to climb a few hill a few, few steps uh, which are not properly carved to reach that uh, uh, particular cave so that's one speciality of this temple so this has been then, a tapasya also of some rishis rishis yes yes and also uh, uh, this place and surroundings had uh, three kalyanis that is three step wells which has been recently renovated by sudha murti's uh, foundation so those three kalyanis were also built during uh, the cholas times only they were very ancient but they were in a very bad uh, bad state a lot of garbage was piled and uh, it, it it was quite dirty actually so now it's been completely cleaned and renovated now so it, it looks beautiful now the surroundings so i think uh, yeah that's it for the cholas uh, now Uh, there are a few uh, i think two or three temples which were built by the hoysalas this one is one of them so hoysalas 12th to 14th centuries they ruled around this uh, region not much so that's why they have just two or three temples here so this one is champagathama temple which uh, again is near banargatta national park so this is a huge temple and has uh, quite a few inscriptions and it mentions a village uh, named uh, suguni which is today's jigni uh, if, if you remember yes so this is this was built by the hoysalas so the next one someshwara temple this is in kacharaknahalli this is near lingrajpuram in east bangalore uh, one of the oldest localities here in the cantonment area so this was also built by the hoysalas this has been completely renovated there was a few inscriptions on the base uh, on the floor of this temple that has also been used now by some local uh, people for their foundation and other personal uh, uh, use so that that's uh, a sad part actually a lot of uh, inscription stones have been uh, like either stolen or broken or they are nowhere to be found so this temple also had one such uh, inscription which has been documented by b l rice uh, in his uh, uh, book epic epigraphic karnataka karnataka so this is uh, shri rama temple in dodanekundi very close to marathalli so this is also a paisala temple even though the temple uh, the antiquity is not there it's been completely renovated now uh, all modern bricks but you see an old inscription here that's a whole special inscription in tamil so that uh, mentions about uh, this temple and the how this uh, locality came into being and there are uh, there is one vardaraja swami temple in rajaji nagar this was also built during the hoysalas so uh, this temple is also renovated and uh, it's not a very popular temple so even if you if you go to rajaji nagar and ask for vardaraja swami temple nobody will be able to tell you probably but uh, this has quite a history so vardaraja swami temples uh, are very few in bangalore i think only two are there so both of them were built during uh, around the same time during be- between hoysalas and the vijayanagara times so this is one of them yeah and another one is this one this is also vardaraja swami temple in singapore this is very close to matikere and jalahalli area so this was also built by the hoysalas so that uh, that completes our uh, ancient temple section that is uh, till 14th century now we'll enter the medieval section which covers uh, vijayanagara the marathas and the mysore kings and campegoda campegoda is uh, i mean he belongs to the vijayanagara era only Okay. so during the vijayanagara so uh, period there, uh, so most of his a temple of, architecture yeah. are similar to the temples which you see in hampi yeah so General... campegoda was a feudatory of vijayanagara right yes 
So, uh, yeah, before starting with the Vijayanagara, I'll take you through a few Hanuman temples which were consecrated by Sri Vyasaraja. So, Vyasaraja was a Madhva saint uh, in, I think, 14th to 15th century. He built several Hanuman temples in South India, not only in Bangalore, but all across South India, he built several Hanuman temples. So, uh, I mean, most of the temples you can see in Bangalore also. And uh, the structures may be uh, quite modern or built during the recent times, but the Hanuman image, which has been carved out of a boulder or a stone, are date back to Vyasaraja's times. What is his time? So this is uh, Gutte Anjaneya Swami Temple. Sorry. No. What is the time of Vyasaraja? 14th to 15th century. Okay. This is uh, Gutte Anjaneya Swami Temple. Uh, it's in Mavalli. It's close to Lalbagh, Lalbagh Botanical Gardens. It's uh, close to that place and it's, it has an interesting uh, story also. Once the Maharaja of Mysore was passing through this particular area on his uh, bullock cart and uh, whenever he used to pass uh, this area, his, his tires used to get punctured and uh, he was surprised that uh, every time I come here, my tires get punctured. What's the reason uh, behind this? And uh, some, some person told that you have to offer prayers to this temple and after that you will not face this problem. And after doing uh, doing that thing, uh, he didn't face that issue anymore. So that's one story from the Mysore times. But this temple dates back much before uh, Mysore Maharajas. And then we have uh, this Anjaneya Swami temple in Alsur. This is very close to the Someshwara temple, uh, which you can see. This was also consecrated by Vyasaraja. And this one is Minto Anjaneya Swami temple. So this is right opposite uh, Minto Hospital in Chamraj Pet. So it, it's believed that uh, people who come for eye surgery in Minto Hospital come and offer prayers on, in, in this temple and uh, pray for successful operation. So that's the significance of this temple. This one is main and popular temples in Bangalore. This is Gali Anjaneya Swami Temple uh, near Batraimpura on Mysore Road. And uh, it, it has its own importance. Uh, Rishabhavati River used to flow quite uh, next to it actually in earlier, not very long ago. At, I think around 50, 60 years ago, the river was in a very good shape and uh, people used to uh, do Abhishekam using that water. But now that river has been reduced to a drain and you can just see froth there, nothing else. Most and it's uh, very smelly river. now. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Most people think there's so, no river in Bangalore. We'll talk about that some other day. Yes, there were three temples. Yeah, we can talk about that later also. So this temple has that importance. This one is near Gottigere between Kanakpura Road and Managatta Road. This uh, temple is also consecrated by Vyasaraya. And uh, this is now developed by Hanuman International Mission, which is based out of uh, Kerala now. We have one more, Karekalu Anjaneya Swami Devasana. This is also near uh, Cotton Pate Main Road on Mysore Road. This one is also, uh, this one is in Kengeri. This one is very close to Kengeri uh, in a village called Kodipalya. And this has a very interesting uh, hero stone also. You can see a lot of images in that stone and uh, one of the most beautiful stones I've ever seen. So this is, uh, this stone is in this pe temple premises. Okay, so that, that uh, those were the temples which were consecrated by uh, Vyasaraja. But uh, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, there were other temples also, uh, Hanuman temples, uh, which I have uh, not put in here because it will become a huge and humongous list, uh, may become overwhelming also. Okay, then uh, let's move on to Vijayanagara times. Uh, this one is Someshwara temple in Marathali. So if you go to Marathali village, old Marathali village, you'll, you'll see the Someshwara temple. And a few meters from that, you'll find the inscription, which is on your left hand side. This also dates back uh, to the Vijayanagara times and uh, this is a Telugu inscription. So from, from, from Vijayanagara times. And this one is a Belli Basavanna temple. This is in the heart of the Pete area in the center of the city. This was built during the Kempe Goda's times. And the Basavanna image uh, was brought from Kote Anjaneya Swami temple uh, site and installed here. And this one is uh, Dharmaraya Swami temple. So uh, this one has its own importance. And uh, uh, if you know, there's a Karga Bangalore festival, which is held every year during uh, around the month of April, wherein a procession is taken from, from uh, this temple. It goes to a Darga and then returns back to this uh, Dharmaraya Swami temple. And uh, uh, the uh, procession is of Dhropadamma. 
So that's uh, Draupadi from the Pandavas. So uh, the Vakliga community organizes uh, this uh, festival. And then this is the Bull Temple. Uh, of course, it became popular, quite popular in the Kempe Gaudas. Uh, the outer structure was built by Kempe Gauda, but, but the Nandi image is quite old. And uh, there is an inscription just below the Nandi image, which says that uh, the river Rishibhavati originates from, from the feet of Nandi. Mm. So, uh, until recently, uh, we could see the traces of uh, that river, but it has vanished now. We can't even see the source of the river. And there is a hospital which is built just next to it. And there was a huge pond there. Uh, I think uh, four or five decades ago, we could see that pond, but uh, we can't see it anymore, unfortunately. And we have lost uh, uh, a very good heritage here in this part of Bangalore. Again, uh, another important structure from Kempe Gauda's times is the Hanumanta Godda in Hanumanta Nagar. You can see that uh, umbrella which is built uh, on top of this hill. This kind of stone umbrella is seen in another, another temple just outside Bangalore near Chikbalapur in a uh, temple called Bogalandeshwara Temple. This Chatri is a unique structure which, is, which, which was built by the Nolambas, which was copied by Kempe Gauda later. And this uh, exists just close to this temple. So this one is near Hallur. This is Chanakeshava temple. So this was also built during the Vijayanagara times. This uh, huge Nandi statue is in one of the temples in the Pete area. Okay, this is an interesting fort, very close to Electronic City and near the Infosys and the Wipro campuses. But this fort has uh, two temples. One is Kashi Vishwanath temple and other is uh, Timurai Swami temple. So uh, both uh, these temples uh, were built during the Kempe Gaudas times and the fort itself uh, dates back uh, to Kempe Gaudas. If you have watched the serial Malgudi Days, in one, one of the episodes, this fort was shown and uh, unfortunately, the fort is, is still in a very good condition and people, people can still go there and see the old structure in its, uh, in its full form. Okay, then we have a couple of uh, uh, the hero stone kind of temples wherein a lot of hero stones are carved in this temple. It's very close to Malaya Hospital in central Bangalore in Sampangi Ramanagara. This is called Bireshwara Temple. So they pay tributes to all the heroes and warriors who have fought uh, uh, with the enemies or who have even saved their village from wild animals. So all those uh, carvings are placed near this temple. And inside there is a small Shivalinga also, which is the main deity. Similar kind of uh, a hero stone temple is found in Benson town in East Bangalore. So this is also called as uh, the Bideshwara temple. So these all temples uh, belong uh, uh, to Kempe Kempe Gauda's times only. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. very interesting name. So the temples with hero stones are called Bideshwara. So it Bideshwara, B. Yeah, so that is derived from V only, just like Bangalore becomes Bangalore. Okay. Uh, so it is uh -huh. Vireshwara yes. only in Sanskrit. So Vireshwara means mm -hmm. the Lord of the, the brave. And then you have hero stone. Right. So a lot right. of history is hidden hidden right. inside right. the names itself. So probably the, uh, I mean, the name Vireshwara has been corrupted and became Vireshwara now. Right, right. <laughs> so that's right. how it's called. So this is uh, Rameshwara temple in Chamraj Pet. Uh, so this uh, uh, this probably dates back uh, before Kempe Gaudas, but uh, it, it, the outer structure and uh, the complete complex was built during the Kempe Gaudas times. Then we have this Someshwara temple in uh, Jainagar. This is very less known temple. So this is in, in the middle of residential locality. So if you uh, uh, go towards Tilak Nagar, and uh, from Hasur Road, if you go inside uh, the Someshwara layout, you can uh, reach this temple. And uh, you, you won't probably even find parking facilities here. And uh, But yes, this temple is um, almost, I think, 600 years old temple. This is another uh, uh, ancient temple in the Pete area. So if you go to the Pete area in central Bangalore, you'll find so many temples. And if, if you walk there, probably if you walk for half an hour, you can come across at least uh, 15 to 20 temples, which uh, are at least 400 to 500 years old. So this is uh, Sugriva temple, uh, which is uh, rarely found anywhere in India. So this uh, is also in the Pete region only. And it was also built by one of the communities, uh, which Kempe Gauda established during this uh, tenure here. 
Yeah, this is also Vijayanagara era temple only in the Pete area. This is Yalanka Gate, uh, Anjanaya Swami Temple. So this temple is uh, right near the Yalahanka Gate, uh, which marked the northern boundary of uh, Kempegowda's fort. So you can still find the temple there, but there is no gate to be seen. Uh, so you can still see the temple and we have an inscription in one of the pillars near this temple also. So this is another temple in Yalahanka town itself, which is uh, which was built by Kempegowda's ancestors. Okay, then I think, uh, okay, we have a couple of more temples. This is Anama Devi Temple, which is in Subeda Chatram Road near Gandhinagar. So Anama Devi is uh, the guardian of the city of Bangalore. She is called, if, uh, uh, if you know, each village uh, in Bangalore has its own Grama Devate, the village goddess. So Anama Devi is uh, Bangalore city's goddess, the Kempe Goddess city. So uh, Anama Devi still guards the old city of Bangalore is what, uh, believe, what is believed. Okay, then we have uh, the Dodd Ganapati temple. Uh, this is near uh, the Big Bull temple. In, within the same premises, it's built in the same era also. And then we have the Karanji Anjanaya Swami temple, which is also built during the Kempe Gaudas. We have the Malik Arjuna Swami temple. Again, the same era. This is Manji Someshwara Swami temple. One uh, uh, historical uh, importance it has is that uh, Manji a divan from uh, who belonged to Kodugu ruler Veera Rajendra's uh, kingdom. He came to Bangalore and he built this temple. So that's a connection between Kodugu, that is Kurg and Bangalore. Uh, so it's, it's called Manji Someshwara Swami Temple. Then we have, if you go to Kumar Swami Temple in uh, Southeast Bangalore, Southwest Bangalore, sorry, near Banchankri, you find this old uh, uh, Shavage Maleshwara Swami Temple. So the place itself is called Shavage Maleshwara Hills. So it was a hill earlier. Now the entire hill uh, has been converted into a, a college campus. So within the college campus, you can find this temple. Then we have a few temples within the four, old fort area, that's Pete area. So now let's uh, go on to Marathas. So after Kempe Gaudas, uh, Marathas came here for a brief period of time. Shivaji's brother, Venkoji, he established quite a few temples uh, in Bangalore. The Kadu Maleshwara temple in Maleshwaram is one of uh, the temples which was built during uh, the Marathas uh, rule. And then we have uh, Sri Rama temple, which is uh, right inside the Karanji Anjaneya Swami temple, which was again built by the Maratha, Marathas. Then we have uh, this Nandi Tirtha temple, which was excavated uh, somewhere in early 2000s or late 90s. And they found uh, water coming out of Nandi's uh, mouth. And it's, 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 it's still coming and uh, it's, it's a perennial water. And some say that this is one of the sources of Rishabhavati River. So, which origin Big Bull, they converge uh, somewhere near Skerehal in uh, southwest Bangalore. And uh, it, it becomes a big river after that. The Rishabhavati grows after that. And then again, it joins Arkavati somewhere close to Chanapatna and uh, somewhere close to Kanakpura, sorry. And then after that, it uh, merges with uh, Kaveri. So oh, that, that's Vati how... Also, the name itself says it, the, the source is Vrishab. Yes, yes, that's correct. So yes, uh, the temple structure was built during the Marathas uh, era. And then we have Bhavani Shankar temple in Vasantpura. So the temple which we saw earlier, Vasanta Vallabharai is from a temple which was built by the Cholas. Just next to that uh, is this Bhavani Shankar temple, which was built by the Marathas. That, that's it on Marathas. So Marathas ruled uh, right after Kempe Godas, uh, during the 15th, 16th century. And then uh, after that, uh, the Mysore kingdom came into existence. And then in between, Tipu Sultan also came. And then uh, the Mysore kings uh, built quite a few temples, uh, which matched the Mysore architecture. So this is one of them. This is uh, Venugopal Swami Temple in Maleshwaram. And then we have this uh, Tulsi to Tota, so which is very close to today's uh, majestic metro station, uh, just near the uh, Kempe Goda bus stand. So uh, Tulsi Tota, and it, it's it's a mini forest. Uh, earlier it was called as Chiklal Bag area. And uh, the Mysore kings came here and, in, and installed uh, the idol of Prasanna Krishna Swami Temple here. It's a Vaishnava temple. 
then we have another uh, mysore style uh, temple in indranagar this temple is yoga narasimha swami temple which uh, is quite close to the pub pub, uh, pub capital of uh, bangalore it's uh, 100 feet road in indranagar and then we reach uh, halnaikana halli this is quite close to sarjapur road uh, and this is kodan trauma temple and the main deity is uh, rama and then in Agra village, we have this uh, Venkateshwara temple, also known as Srinivasa temple. So this also has a lot of carvings uh, from the Mysore uh, Vadiya's time. And also there is an annual uh, Jatra which is held here. I think we had discussed that uh, when we spoke last. So right. uh, that's one of uh, the main festivals in, in the entire locality. And then we have Bhadra Swami Temple in Saraki. This is uh, uh, close to Kanakpura Road and uh, near Banshankri Metro Station. And then we have uh, other temples which belong to Mysore Kingdom. So I've just randomly put those uh, just for reference. This one is in Bellandur and it has uh, a few inscriptions also from uh, the Mysore uh, Kingdom's times and the grants which Mysore Maharaja gave to build this temple. This temple is then, older, right? The Belandu temple is older. Uh, yeah, but uh, but the land was owned by the Mysore Maharajas and uh, the outer, the current structure is uh, not very old. It probably uh, it's, it's around 250 years old, I think now. Okay. So this one is in Shantinagar, also dates back to Mysore Maharajas. Then we have Sampanki Ramaswami temple. It's, it's near uh, Cunningham Road. So the image is not clear on the left hand side, but we have uh, Rama, Lakshmana and Sita and also Hanuman carved here on a rock. So the rock has been completely covered and uh, uh, a lot of uh, tiles and slabs have come. So uh, the image is not very clear here in this photograph. And then we have uh, some other temples, Kashi Vishwanath temple and then uh, this uh, this temple was built by Divan Purnaya. This stands on uh, the old, uh, this stands near the race course actually. So this was built during Divan Purnaya's times. And uh, this is not open to public and it's, it's a private property. And still it's, it's owned by Divan Purnaya's family. This temple which you see here is just uh, uh, next to a masjid in Shivaji Nagar. And uh, uh, I mean, it, it's one of the most photographed temples uh, because there's a church, there's a mosque, and there's a temple just next to each other. So uh, this also dates back to the Mysore Maharaja's times, and uh, it, it's an Asim Swami temple. This is Jalkanteshwara temple. Yeah, it's uh, very close to Vibhutipura and uh, Kagadaspura area. This is uh, an old Nandi structure, and the temple is completely renovated now. This is in Jayanagar. And uh, there are uh, a couple of more temples which belong uh, to Mysore times with uh, very less significance. So all these temples are having less significance. So this one is having uh, some significance, I think. This is uh, Kodi Basavanna temple, which is in Sheshadripuram area. And uh, the word Kodi means uh, it's a, a river bank. So that means that the river once flowed just next to it. If you go to Google map and search uh, for this temple, you can see, still see a blue line passing next to it, which is a drain of course now, but earlier a river used to pass through it, uh, next to it. So that's why it's called Kodi, Kodi Basavanna temple. And then uh, this one is probably one of the most uh, popular temples from the Mysore times. It's Kote Venkat Ramana Swami temple. Okay, this one is in uh, Kadubisina Halli. This is Kumbeshwara temple. Then we have Tulsi Ramdas uh, in Fraser Town. And then we have a couple of uh, old Shiva temples. This one is in uh, east of uh, Bangalore, very close to uh, uh, Hennur and uh, the road which leads to the new airport. So that's all about uh, the medieval temples, uh, which we covered uh, all, all the way up till independence time. So post-independence, there are uh, quite a few temples which are popular now, but the structure of the temples has completely changed now. And also the way people have started uh, looking at the temples and they started visiting temples uh, has, has gradually changed now. So uh, first one is uh, uh, the Shiva temple, which uh, is in uh, HAL area, the old airport road area. 
So this was built in 1997, I think, in the late 1990s uh, by uh, Gujarati merchant, I think. So this has uh, all the Jyotir Lingas uh, uh, built within the temple premises. So we can uh, have a feeling of visiting all the uh, 12 Jyotir Lingas here. And the statue itself is uh, quite huge. So a lot of people visit this place. Temple was built next to a mall. Earlier, a mall called Kempford used to exist here. Now, I think a different mall has come up. So, uh, this one is a Hanuman temple, which is in Sheshadripuram. Uh, not as popular, but uh, it has uh, quite a lot of uh, following. A lot of people come here and they believe that their prayers are answered here. So, it's uh, popular in terms of uh, the faith. This one is Banchankri Temple, uh, another popular temple in South Bangalore. So it's uh, believed that a businessman uh, came from, uh, uh, I mean, he visited the Banchankri Temple in North Karnataka and he brought Banchankri Amma idol from uh, uh, Banchankri, which is near Badami, North Karnataka, and installed it here. And uh, this uh, temple dates back. I think it's uh, pre-independence, but the outer structure is uh, quite new. I think it should be 50 years old. This one is uh, Banaswadi Anjaneya Swami Temple. This one also is quite popular among uh, pilgrims. And uh, people come here and, uh, and uh, their wishes are fulfilled is what they believe. And this one is interesting. If you see three images here, if you go to Banshankri area, you will you'll, you, uh, you will come across three hillocks. Uh, the, uh, the one which you see, the image which you see on the top uh, left hand side, that is called uh, Banagiri. On next to it is uh, Hanuma Giri, and the bottom one is uh, Dev Giri. So there are three Giris uh, within Banchankri, and all three Giris have uh, temples dedicated there. One Hanuma Giri has Hanuman Temple, Dev Giri, and uh, Banagiri has uh, Vishnu temples dedicated. And uh, Vaikun Dekadashi is celebrated uh, in a grand manner in these temples. This one is Bangaragiri Temple. Uh, it, it's quite close to RT Nagar area near Hebard. And uh, we can reach the Subramanya Swami temple by climbing this series of steps. Though this temple is quite good and we can have a 360 degree panorama of uh, North Bangalore, this temple is very less known uh, uh, to the people who reside outside this area. But yes, uh, I would suggest uh, anyone who has not visited this temple to visit here at least once. It, it's quite a uh, calm and pleasant place. This is uh, the Narasimha Swami temple in uh, Bamanhalli. So this temp the unique feature of this temple is the Meru, which uh, the, the triangular structure which you see in front of the image. So this Meru dates back uh, to 500 years uh, old and it was earlier placed in uh, Lakshmi Narasimha Swami temple in Ijipura. And then uh, post-independence, uh, uh, there were a lot of destructions happening uh, everywhere and developments were happening. So uh, one person brought that Meru from Ichipura to this temple and they built a temple around this. And uh, the Meru is still worshipped in this temple. This is uh, Durga Parmeshwari temple in Vidyaranyapura. Uh, probably this, uh, this had to be in prehistoric uh, section, but uh, since it has a large gopuram and it has uh, idols also within, within this uh, premises, I placed it in modern temples. Since the outer structure, everything uh, is quite modernized and people uh, write their wishes in a chit of paper and they put it in hundi. They pray that their wishes are fulfilled and after, I think... Uh, a fixed number of days. Once the wish is fulfilled, they come back and uh, pray uh, to the God again and uh, they give donations and all. So that's the belief here. This one is uh, Rama Temple uh, in Ijipura. It has a gigantic statue of Vishnu's Virat Rup, which has been recently installed. It's, it's still uh, not ready and not open to public, but still we can see the structure here if you go there. So it, it's, it's a gigantic statue. This one is called Varapada uh, Narsim Swami Temple in Hoskarehalli. So the original uh, idol of Narsim Swami was brought uh, from, uh, from a village in Kurg and was installed here. So that's, uh, and the temple structure is also built in Kurg style of architecture. This is a Rage Gudda temple, uh, which is very close to Jayanagar. It's built on top of a hillock. 
this is a uh, hanuman temple this is ankala parmeshwari temple in oklipuram uh, the outer structure looks uh, quite huge and uh, uh, again here this temple lot of bali and all those kind of offerings are given uh, to the deity so it's it's an amma temple uh, right uh, quite close to the city railway station then we have uh, a couple of buddha vihara and jain temples which were built uh, uh, during the independence just after independence times uh, iskon is probably one of the most popular temples uh, and it uh, features in kstdc's daily Uh, daily uh, city trips also and no need to give an explanation on why it's popular so it yeah, i mean there is a similar temple in south bangalore also in kanakpura road which is being built now so uh, it's visited by several tourists uh, on a daily basis this one is kambada narsimha swami temple this is uh, quite close to kengeri close to mysore road and then we have uh, the kumar swami temple in hanumanta nagar and uh, karma vimochana temple so this is in sarjapur road this is quite close to wipro corporate office and if you go inside towards gunju road you will see this temple and uh, you have to do a, a parikrama pradakshina by circling a tree and it believe that whatever you wish will be fulfilled here so this is called karma vimochana temple and uh, even if you have committed any sins in the past and you have to you are repenting for it and uh, you regret performing that action you can come here and offer your prayers and uh, you will be forgiven for that is uh, what is believed so this is viranjaneya temple in mahalakshmi layout this is also a huge idol of hanuman which was earlier built uh, in uh, on top of a hillock now a temple has come up and a residential area has been uh, completely come up around this area and then we have uh, this mallikarjun swami temple uh, near banshankri this is quite uh, popular and uh, this is where lot of uh, kannada serials are shot actually so you will find lot of colorful images uh, shivalingas and everything here and then we have maruti mandir in vijayanagar which is uh, a landmark now so if you earlier i mean if, if you had come here in 70s uh, the, the place was popular as uh, koti bande that means it was uh, a place where lot of monkeys used to roam around so now this the place has completely changed with the metro coming up and uh, rapid urbanization this is uh, we have another hanumagiri temple in nagar bhavi this is also a, a modern temple if you go on top go to the top of the temple you can see a beautiful uh, birds eye view of uh, the western part of bangalore then we have ramanjaneya gudda in hanumantanagar and uh, virabhadra swami temple near girinagar and then a virgalu temple a hero stone temple uh, normally we we see hero stones associated with uh, ancient temples but uh, Uh, very rarely we can see a, a virgalu or hero stones which are quite modern so this is a modern temple probably around 20 to 30 years old so this is very close to electronic city so that's uh, that completes uh, our series on temples uh, one thing which i my observation is that uh, the old temple the earlier temples people were close to the nature they used to worship uh, trees uh, and uh, plants and all those things uh, but uh, now i think uh, the focus has changed to uh, i mean they're building a big hall and uh, people have to give donations people have to follow some rules so uh, uh, i don't i don't think uh, that's a, <laughs> a great thing and also the architecture uh, if you see the modern temple uh, now modern temples and the ancient temples the vibes which you feel in an ancient old temple does not match the modern ones so that that's my observation that is a uh, you are like an encyclopedia so you are like an encyclopedia on temples of bangalore uh, which <laughs> i know and now a lot of lot more people would know so quickly uh, what are the top 2 3 4 temples that a visitor to bangalore can see people who are living in bangalore should ideally see uh, as many as possible but what the visitors uh, to bangalore can see begur panchalingeshwara swami temple is a must they should definitely see that one that is one temple i would uh, recommend big bull temple uh, the baswan gudi is another temple which people should visit also sobeshwara Tem- uh, swami temple it has uh, intricate carvings I- within that and it matches the sobeshwara temple which is in kolar so it's very architecture is very much similar to that so people should visit uh, that one as well 
Gavi Gangadhareshwara Temple is another one which I would uh, recommend, if possible, on Makar Sankranti day. If not, then any day is fine. So that's uh, another temple. And then Chakanatha Swami Temple in Domlur is uh, another temple which I would uh, recommend. Even though uh, it's difficult to take your uh, four-wheeler inside that area, but uh, it <laughs> the temple is very beautiful. So I, when, when you were when I was listening to you for last uh, more than an hour now, uh, I could see a lot of Anjaneya temples, a lot of Hanuman yes. temples, you yes. know. Yes. And then it suddenly struck me, this is the land of Hanuman. Yes. So <laughs> it is bound to have a lot of Hanuman temples. Absolutely. This is yeah. the home of Hanuman, so Kishkinda. Yeah, uh, you know, so uh, so it's very interesting. Another two names which come out very uh, repeatedly are uh, Kashi Vishwanath Temple yes. and Tomeshwara Swami Temple. Yes, yes. you know, so uh, we need to see what is the linkage there. And uh, Kashi Vishwanath probably because people got the linga from Kashi, yes. because yes. a lot of lingas used to come from Kashi yes. temples, so that's why right. they needed Kashi Vishwanath. Uh, Someshwara, like you said, it's a family deity. So it's mm. very, very interesting. And and of course, the city is named after Venkata Swami. Yes. So, uh, Venguluru comes from Venkata Swami. So very, very interesting history. And uh, I would request all our viewers to ask as many questions as possible. And we'll uh, request Arun to answer those questions. He may or may not have the answers. If he doesn't have the answers, he'll go out and find the answers. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Like, come back and hopefully Arun we will go someday to explore at least some parts of Bangalore together yeah because yeah. I'm finding a lot I, I could remember a few more temples uh, which uh, you probably did not cover due to paucity of time mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of ant hills that are worshipped uh, yes body, you know so right. which are bound to be ancient Correct. Uh, or at least the tradition is ancient mm -hmm. then there is a very interesting temple I saw which is in the shape of a bird uh, oh, it's near corporation okay. circle uh, oh. I haven't been inside, but okay. every time I have I've passed by it, it's in the shape of a bird, a, a parrot probably. Oh. So there are a lot of interesting temples to be yeah. covered, explored, shared, documented, chronicled, everything. But exactly. Thank you so much for taking the initiative and documenting so many temples. Thank Is you. your book available online for people to buy? Uh, not exclusively on uh, the temples, but I have a book on Bangalore, which is available on Amazon and Flipkart. I can share the link in the description yes. or I'll share it to you. You can put it in the description. Put it in the description. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah. Right. Great, Arun. Thank you so much for taking out time and taking us through the journey of Bangalore through the lens of temples. Thank you for joining us on Detours. You can also join us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Our handle is Indie Tales, I-N-D-I-T-A-L-E-S. See you soon.